My girlfriend works in the education system and you might be saying, Matt, this is a strange sentence to start off the video and normally you would be right, but today it is relevant. The children at school are monitored and when they search something risky or naughty, it gets flagged and we get to see what they search. You might see where this is headed, but a few months ago, take a guess what was searched. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it was rule 34 Gardevoir and I have to say up front that you should never look this up for yourself, especially if you are younger because it's some of the weirdest and most profane stuff you can be exposed to, so just don't do it. Stop it. Besides the fact that a 10 year old kid is looking up sexy Gardevoir pictures, it kind of took me by surprise because I had no clue that this was still a thing over 20 years after Ruby and Sapphire's release, but maybe I'm just ignorant. So what does this have to do with anything? Nothing. But today we will be taking a look at Gardevoir in a solo run. I've had my eye on this one and I have planned it for many months, and I thought that this Pokemon more than any other would have a chance at not only being the best Sanquee run, but possibly be able to compete at the top of the tier list. So I was very intrigued. And if you would like to try the runs for yourself, you can mess around with the website. It's called Sanquee. That's where I get this run from. And if you want to know the rules for the run, they are in the description as always. And before we really dive into it, I'd like to just quickly say that I do solo runs often. And if that is of interest to you and you enjoy the video, feel free to subscribe to be kept up to date. Now more importantly, likes and comments are what helps extend the video's reach the most. And whether you are someone new or a returning subscriber like the Mark Tenification, just scroll down and this week I want you to give me your word that you didn't look up Rule 34 Gardevoir. I need to know that you didn't search and witness the monstrosities that are out there on the internet. So that would just help me out. And with that out of the way, sit back, relax, grab yourself a soda pop, and let's just see how good this run can actually be. Gardevoir doesn't have the world most impressive stats, but similar to something like Starmie, it does have them where it counts. 125 base special is superb, and 80 base speed is enough to move first in pretty much all the battles in the game. Fairy typing is also intriguing. Every other fairy type run that I've tested wasn't great, but coupled with that psychic typing means that poison tops will not be that big of an issue today. The one thing that got me hot for this run is the starting moveset. Moonblast is a 95 base power move similar to things like Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Serve, and it gives you a ton of power early while Confusion is there as a mid-tier psychic move to handle anything that resists that. Double Team also has a bit of a stigma in solo runs, and even though I've never explicitly stated this in the rules, the TM is always banned because it's a little bit cheap. Moving forward and something that I haven't had the opportunity to talk about is that if a Pokemon learns moves like this naturally, then I think it's going to be fair game. Evasion is a bit of a gray area, but not allowing a Pokemon to use the tools they have at their disposal seems a bit harsh and punishing. Also, don't forget that Double Team does trigger the badge boost, so we'll just have to see how much we actually need it, and a side run like this is just a great place to test that out. Outside of that, the learn set is a little sparse like we've seen from a lot of Sanqui runs, but you do get Thunderbolt for Lorelai and Gyarados coverage, and we'll get to see a new move today in Magical Leaf, but we'll talk about that when it comes up in the video. The last thing to really note about Gardevoir is that, unfortunately, it is in the slow leveling group, and I was pretty sad about that because I didn't think it was at first, but it is what it is. Now let's start to talk about the run. And with topping this good and moves this good at the start of the game, we're gonna be on the minimum battle track. I do want to point out something that most fairy types have to deal with. Look at this first mandatory bug catcher here. Look at this poison sting damage from this Weedle, and you can start to get an idea of how later things like Koga would be a huge problem for fairy types that have no coverage. But luckily we do have confusion, but I just want you to really look at that damage because it was pretty intense. From there, we can just go straight to Brock. And here I wanna emphasize the importance of double team for Gardevoir. Notice how hard this tackle from the Geodude hits me. It does nearly half of my health. And without double team, I undoubtedly would have to grind a lot more and the run would just be far worse without it. So here I set up two. It gives me some insurance from getting hit too often. And I do take a single rage from the Onyx later, but overall in this fight, a few moon blasts can get you past and we don't have to keep dwelling on it. I just want you to know how important double team was for the run. Now looking ahead to the next route, I want to say that there are so many poison types in Kanto and you really don't notice 
notice it unless you're weak to it. But a run like Sylveon that I tested really struggled here, and the psychic typing and confusion really makes this a non-issue, but it is worth pointing out. Moving ahead to Cerulean, I immediately take on Misty, and the real reason is that I have double team. Remember that this is my third run, and everything is pretty much optimized, and this time I decided to fully lean on double team. And this goes down like you would suspect. I get pretty low, but once I'm able to get a stranglehold and set up those double teams, I'm able to just cruise past the fight. It's fairly short, but I do get hit really hard. That's something you're going to notice is that Gardevoir cannot take a hit, but double teams allow you to offset that. And I'm able to get past a very tough fight because being in the slow leveling group and not doing any extra battles made rival number two extremely hard and getting these extra two levels right now really helped. And even though I take a sand attack from the Pidgeotto, I'm able to set up just a little bit of double teams and eventually through some persistence, I'm able to get past this fight too. And I just trust me when I say that going into this fight at level 12 is an absolute nightmare. And the only way I could get it done consistently without having to use rare candies or pick up three or four extra battles was to do it this way. And I'm very happy with how it played out. After that, I can skip all the way ahead to the SSN. And notice how I'm passing Body Slam right now. I do have it listed on the side. And you would think that it would be great for Psychic types. But it's really not needed. I did a lot of testing without it. And here we just skip it to save a little bit of time. As for rival number three, I do take a Sand Attack today. But I'm able to not miss too much. And I don't even heal going into the fight. So I'm not really too worried about it. And even though I take some damage here and there, it's a pretty smooth fight. Now notice like in the giraffe rig run where bite was a huge problem and psychic is weak to dark but remember that that fairy typing resisting dark helps out to make it neutral so it wasn't really that big of an issue with a big special like Gardevoir has. Let's rapid fire our way to surge and before we get to the end of the fight X speed we take out Raichu fairly easy but what's important to know at level 22 we do get magical leaf. Grass coverage is really good in rock tunnel. It covers the cubone. It covers the slow pokes it covers the self-destruct hacker so it's really good it's actually better than thunderbolt at this stage in the game and it's pretty much a swift clone it's the grass version of swift 60 base power it never misses and it makes it to where we don't have to look at rock tunnel today looking ahead at celadon i immediately go shop before i even do the rocket hideout i go ahead and i pick up the tms at the top floor just to sell for some money so that i can get as much vitamins as possible but the main thing here is getting access to Saffron and getting access to Psychic, which is really going to put us on another level in terms of power. And with a moveset of Moonblast, Psychic, Double Team, we have a very strong core for pretty much the rest of the game. And for now, Magical Leaf is good enough to give us coverage where it's needed. And we can just easily crush Giovanni. There's no need to look at it. And from there, I actually decide to go straight to Erica since her poison type, grass types are all weak to Psychic. And we just picked up the move. And what better way to test it out than this? Tangela can survive, it just does its best like it always does, but ultimately it's a pretty quick battle. And the same thing can be said about rival number 4 and Pokemon Tower in general. I pick up the final HMs of the run, and then we take on Koga, and you might be thinking poison type against this fairy, but we have Psychic, you already know how this one's gonna go down. And this is really the beauty of Gardevoir, the two typings complement each other so well, especially in a Kanto solo run, and you really just have an answer for anything, there's not really any anything that just hard walls you and it feels pretty good like we're able to cruise past this fight get the badge boost and things are looking really good we've been going really rapid fire since we made it to celadon now it's time to take a very brisk swim down to cinnabar and today i'm just here very shortly just to get the flight path for cinnabar later and to get those sweet two rare candies and the secret key and then we are on our way to sylphco there's no monkeying around today i go straight to the 10th floor we get the extra stuff like the carbos and the rare candy and then we can just take a look at rival number five but i do replace magical leaf first with thunderbolt just so we can have that extra coverage and now let's just take a look with thunderbolt in hand i can easily take care of the pidgeot but i do want to talk about double team just a little bit more now we have to use two of them here on the growlithe and you can see we do take some damage here but it's really not that bad i just want to emphasize that on my third run here just like we've seen with brock just like we've seen with misty using a couple of double teams here here and there can really bypass 
sacrifice a lot of extra battles that you would have had to do otherwise. At the end of the day, little tactics like this really let you trim the fat of the run and really get down deep into what the best possible time is. And even though we get kind of low, the executes annoying and poisons us, we still survive at the end of the day and we're able to get past this battle very early with no extra time commitment from other battles and that's fantastic and that's what all top tier runs need. From there I make my return to Cinnabar and after a little bit of Tombstoner, brother. We can take a look at Blaine. This was another fight that was pretty rough in testing. Now, Fire Type does resist fairy moves like Moonblast, but Fire itself isn't super effective. This fight's just, I don't know what it is about Sanqui, Blaine. Growlithe is very annoying, so I opt just to deal with it as fast as I can. And I do want to set up a couple of double teams on the Ponyta just to give myself a little bit of insurance so that I don't have to reset because I'm at a perfect record as it stands now. Things go very well, I'm able to cruise through the fight, and we finally get to that Arcanine. And I don't need to tell you guys that this thing is a beefy, thick little boy. And even though I set up a couple of double teams, this dude is able to hit three bites through the double teams. And I go all the way down to a single point of HP, just one HP. But I am able to survive, and we pull out a real clincher of a battle, and we're going into the seventh gym undefeated. Defeated. Now let's take a look at Sabrina and this is normally where a move like Body Slam would come in handy even on runs like Mewtwo needs something like that. And the start of the battle is not too bad. I bob and weave my way through the fight and I do set up double teams here. So why am I setting up double teams? It's not because I need insurance. It's because I now have the special badge boost. I have the speed badge boost and I need to get some extra damage for the end of the fight. So we take out everything. Now we can talk about the Alakazam. Now Sabrina's AI in Pokemon Red and Blue would just spam recover ad nauseum basically forever. And what I haven't mentioned yet is Moonblast, just like with Psychic, they have a chance to drop special. So Moonblast is just a slightly stronger Psychic. And what I'm making on here and my optimization I made for this run is that I have about 25 power points worth of moves that can lower special. So if this thing wants to spam recover all day long, eventually I will get enough special drops and I will defeat it. And here it just happens kind of fast. It's not too bad. This is why I didn't need Body Slam. This is why it's not in the move set. And now that's all seven gems down, just Giovanni left. And this one's easy. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Magical Leaf would have been really good for this fight, but it's just not worth it. You don't need to make an easy fight even easier. I get through. Now I do take a Night Slash guaranteed to crit move from Doug Trio, and it nearly chops me in half, but it's fine. Everything else goes down fairly easy. That's eight badges down. Now, my friends, we have six tough battles to lose look at at the end game. Before the sixth rival battle, I do use 10 of my rare candies. I go all the way up to level 50. And let's just take a look. Now the Pidgeot is first. I have Thunderball. It's nothing. I do want to set up double teams on the Rhyhorn. And this is just the point. This is why double team such a polarizing move. Why I always ban the TM. Because look at this. I set up several times, but the AI just decides that it doesn't care. And it's going to hit me every single time. Even though it has like a 30 percent chance to hit me at this point it's just gonna do it every single time it's very luck based it can be very frustrating it's not consistent but I do survive I set up and once I have my special boosted and my speed boosted I can just roll through the rest of the fight I would like to say that using all my rare candies here to get up to 50 was a huge adjustment normally I'm very stingy and I have to work on that really but I was trying this fight at like level 40 maybe using two or three rare candies here and there but just use them all right here because at level 42 43, 45, whatever you want to try this fight at. It's very hard if you don't just use the rare candies. And overall, this one's not too bad, but it is kind of funny that Rhyhorn decided just to hit me every single time through all the double teams. Now we don't really have anything else to really talk about. Our learn set is pretty much set. Moonblast, Psychic, Double Team, and Thunderbolt are pretty much everything that we need. And I do pick up the optional rare candy in Victory Road, because like you guys already know, you want to reset your experience if you are using a badge boosting move, and I don't want to level up at a bad position for the champion fight. And with that out of the way, let's just dive straight into Lorelai and see how that battle looks. And we 
we've seen a lot of runs on Lorelai with high special Pokemon that have Thunderbolt. The start is always the same. You're going to get rid of the Dugong. You're going to get rid of the Cloyster as fast as you can. But here, I do decide to get some insurance for the Jinx and the Lapras by setting up a little bit on the Slowbro. And it's not because I'm scared of getting hit hard or anything like that. It's simply for the badge boost. I want to be a little bit faster and I need to hit a little bit harder because of Jinx. And you might be wondering, why Jinx? Well, guys, there's a move called Fake Tears. It's a dark type move and it harshly lowers your special. And if a special focused Pokemon get hit by that move, they're pretty much dead in the water. So here I'm boosting just so I can make sure I one shot the Jinx and by default we can one shot the Lapras as well and we can just move on. But Fake Tears, very powerful move. Very glad it's not in vanilla generation one. Next up is Bruno and we have a special treat for you today. We haven't got to see a fairy move hit a fighting type yet and today oh he gets blasted even harder than he normally does i really couldn't think of a pokemon better equipped to absolutely decimate him and it is what it is it's bruno let's move on next up is agatha and with sanqui adding new moves this one could be difficult and let's just talk about it for a second now first up is gengar and it uses dark pulse dark pulse itself is a neutral move it's not too bad it does decent damage but the most important thing is that it flinches us and i can't get off the psychic now from there she makes an aggressive swap into the Golbat, I'm able to take it out and she brings back in the Gengar. I go for Psychic once again and she does a hard switch and she catches the Psychic onto the Haunter. I take it out, the Gengar comes back in. And this time it stops playing games, it has Shadow Ball, it uses it and it's enough super effective damage to mark our first reset of the run and that's unfortunate but let's just hop into the next attempt. This time Gengar goes for Shadow Punch and it does absurd damage and even though I'm able to knock it out with a psychic and I outspeed and have super effective damage for pretty much the rest of the team I know that that final Gengar is gonna be a hassle so I make a executive decision here to take a risk I go for some double team setup so I can outspeed the final Gengar and I get hit by a critical hit crunch on the Arbok and that's another reset on the third attempt I learned from my mistakes now we get lucky here we get another dark pulse from the first Gengar and that means I don't take a ton of damage and I'm able to just sweep pretty much to there. I don't get flinched, so I'm able to take out the Gengar, the Golbat, the Haunter, but on the Arbok, I do want to set up, and I'm healthy enough to tank anything outside of a crit, and I use two double teams to ensure that I outspeed and do a little extra damage, and that means when the final Gengar comes in, I'm able to one-shot it with a Psychic, and even though we had two resets here, it really wasn't that bad. Better than most runs. We can look ahead once again. Next up is Lance, and you might think that this one would be a steamroll, but this one was actually a a pretty hard puzzle for Gardevoir to solve. Now Gyarados is nothing. You have Thunderbolt, you can just take it out. Now the Aerodactyl's the problem here. It has Iron Head, it will absolutely crush you, so you need to set up to outspeed it. And the Dragonairs are a problem because of Thunder Wave. We've seen that in other runs. So the first Dragonair comes out, I set up one double team, it doesn't go for Thunder Wave, I take it out. Second one comes in, I set up another double team, it misses Thunder Wave thankfully. And from there I set up one more double team, it misses another move, and that's all we we really need for this fight because at that point we outspeed the Aerodactyl, we can take it out with one Thunderbolt and the Dragonite unsurprisingly falls to a Moonblast and that's pretty much this fight. It didn't look like much but I promise you that this one was a pretty big headache on my first couple of runs when you're trying to plan out the routes and stuff. And my friends that leaves us with one final battle with the champion but first we heal up. I use my final rare candy to reset my experience so that I won't level up in this final fight and let's just dive in and see how this one goes. First up is Pidgeot, and you guys know how it goes in a champion fight when you have a badge boosting move. This is as good of a time as any to set up, and I do just that. I believe I only set up five here, and then I go for the Thunderbolt for the kill, but five boost is enough to ensure that we take minimal damage from Alakazam and can do pretty heavy damage back. Now looking at this damage range here, it looks like perhaps a six double team would have allowed me to get past, but it is what it is. We're not going to redo the entire run just for that one little tiny mistake. 
And after that, after we're boosted, we're set up, the Alakazam is down, there's really not much more to talk about. I don't necessarily one-shot everything, but the neutral damage is enough for me to just pretty much sweep through the fight. The Blastoise does do its best at the very end with a critical hit bite. It tries its hardest, but at the end of the day, I have a boosted Thunderbolt, and I take the fight. And that's it. Gardevoir has done it. I was very pleased with this run. I don't know how many runs it would take you to have zero resets. I know if, if your goal was zero resets, you could just over level a couple of things and it would be a little bit easier. But as it stands, Agatha was the only problem. And unless you outspeed that Gengar, you're pretty much getting one shot if it decides to go for Shadow Ball. So you're just flipping the coin there and there's not really much more you can do. Outside of that, I was very happy with all the optimizations. But let's stop Stop talking about it and let's just see how Gardevoir did. Gardevoir finishes with a level of 56, only two resets, and a final time of 2 hours and 19 minutes. Guys, this is an incredible performance for a Sanqui ROM. Now, I say this a lot and I really want to emphasize it to you. My regular runs, especially those top tier runs, I have all the tools. I have game hook, I have live updating stats on the screen, I have other software where I can calculate damage range and I can really refine runs and I just can't do that with Sanqui runs. In a lot of ways Sanqui runs feel like how first doing solo run challenges on the channel felt back to where I was just basically just doing them. But overall this run is incredible. It would probably be just enough to get it into that A plus tier if we were to put it on the actual tier list because any run under 2 hours and 20 minutes is exceptional. And this is a run that I didn't really get to refine a whole lot outside of just doing 3 runs writing down some stuff to change there really wasn't like a deep dive into the stats now with that said this might be the very last Sanqui run that I do I think it will be and don't be sad don't be thinking why would you do that because this is fun I have hinted at this in the Kyogre video but I've been working really hard with a disassembly I've been working with code I've been working with making my own sprites and all that kind of stuff and we'll announce all that kind of stuff later but I think we can do cross-gen runs that I just make myself that I have more control of we can use the the live updating overlay with it I can get down to damage ranges and I can just add them into my software and we can really have fun with that more importantly we can do good Pokemon like uh, let's say some gen 4 Pokemon that don't have back sprites in the Sanqui ROM we can do gen 7 gen 8 even gen 9 Pokemon that just came out with Scarlet and Violet so it's very exciting to do but overall Gardevoir was a success it did every bit as good as I thought it could do maybe one day we can revisit this when we're looking at uh, doing runs with custom made ROMs but I think that's all I really have for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If this is your first one I hope you really liked it. Uh, returning viewers anybody who makes it this far I really appreciate you and I'm just going to have the members scroll up on the screen. I really appreciate the support. It can't be stated enough but my voice is a little bit worn out so I'm not going to name all the names but eventually we'll get this list cleaned up. I'll get caught up to reality I really pushed for these videos and December. So if the list doesn't look like it should currently, or if somebody who hasn't been a member for like three weeks is on here, I apologize. There's not really nothing I can do about it, but I love you guys. I will catch you guys on the next video. No Mewtwo today. Bye.